Well, the window sticker or Monroney label, and the reason it's called a Monroney label is there was actually a congressman from Oklahoma whose last name was Monroney, who sponsored a bill and had the bill passed that became law that required manufacturers to place on the car what equipment came with the car, what the base price was, what all the accessories were, what the options were, and what the total price of the vehicle is, which we call the Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price, or MSRP, because who the hell wants to refer to it as a Monroney label? It's referred to as a, as a window sticker. But believe it or not, when I first started in the late 70s, window stickers weren't required on pickup trucks. They were required on cars at that point in time, but they weren't required on pickup trucks. So if you had a customer that was on a pickup truck and they were really excited about the pickup truck that they were looking at and you were talking to them about, you could make the price whatever you wanted. And thankfully, some some people in, in a position of power came to their senses and said, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything should have a price. Everything should have a legitimate asking price. It shouldn't be, for this guy, it's $3,000, but this guy who's really excited, it's $4,500. No, it has a, a manufacturer's suggested retail price. And the window sticker includes, it's VIN-specific, so it'll tell you everything about the car. It gives you the VIN number, the serial number of the car. It gives you the exterior color, the interior color, uh, every option. It, it'll list everything that's standard. Most things that are standard, it's not going to list everything, but any options uh, that came from the manufacturer or option packages, it'll list that with their cost. It'll list the, uh, the inland transportation fee. Um, and then dealers, if they add some dealer installed equipment like in the old days when I started, we used to add body side moldings to every car and hand painted pinstripes and, uh, and door edge guards. There'll be a separate sticker for that, for the dealer installed accessories. And then if you're on a, on a car that's in a high demand and, and low availability, you might see things such as ADM, additional dealer markup which is just, well, the extra dollars that the dealer figures he can get for the product because it's in short supply and high demand. And oftentimes you can see that to be anywhere from $500 to $5,000, depending on the car and, and how in demand it is. And, and a lot of dealers can rationalize that they should do that because it's in high demand. And I would suggest to you that that's one of the worst things that they could ever do. And the reason I say it's one of the worst things you can ever do is because one day that customer is going to wake up and they're going to go, I just spent $5,000 for air. I got nothing for that $5,000 other than the ability to buy this car. And when I go to get rid of this car, you know what I'm going to get for that $5,000? Absolutely nothing. So my suggestion to dealers is if you have a car that's in, in high demand and low supply, you shouldn't charge a penny more than the manufacturer suggested retail price because dealers will tell you people pay the manufacturer suggested retail price, I don't know, less than 1% of the time. So there's typically enough margin built into the car that you can afford to do that. Um, when, when you wonder about what the margins are in cars, uh, typically the margins are the profit that's built into a car. Uh, on, on inexpensive cars, take, take a car that has an MSRP of, say, $15,000. Cars like that typically have 2 to 3% margin built into them. What that means is if the car is $15,000 and it has, it has 2%, well, that's... That's 300 bucks profit. That's not a lot, okay? So 
those cars are oftentimes used as price leaders to get people in the door in, with the hopes of selling them something else. Uh, I think that's been referred to in, in the automobile industry and in other industries as bait and switch, uh, where you advertise something at a really low price, and lo and behold, when somebody comes in to get it, it's just it it just sold. We're so sorry. It literally ten minutes ago, right before you walked in, it's. But I got another car just like it. It's only a little bit more, and so there's a lot of dealers that do that. But that's. When, when you're just when you're working with limited margin, it's tough. I, I remember this goes back like 9,000 years. Uh, when, I, when, when I was with Datsun before Datsun became Nissan. And we had a car, the Honeybee. It was a, it, it was a B210 and it was yellow and it actually had yellow uh, or black and uh, honeybee stickers on the side of the car and the car had like a list price this is going to sound odd to anybody but it had a list price of like seventeen hundred and ninety dollars okay and it had a dealer invoice of like seventeen hundred and ten dollars so if somebody came in and they wanted a discount what were you giving them i mean what literally what could you give them okay you were making eighty dollars if you sold it for the msrp you know, I couldn't even treat myself to a decent lunch on the on the 10% commission I got on that because what was, what was I making, eight bucks? I mean, where are you going? So you have to realize that on your cheaper cars, there's just not a lot of margin built in. On, on, as cars go up in value, typically the spread in the margin goes up. Um, Mercedes-Benz, which everybody thinks is a very expensive car and can be. Typical margins in a Mercedes-Benz are 8 to 12 percent, which is why so many Mercedes-Benz stores today, if you go in, you say hello and they go, okay, I'll take 10 percent off. It's not like anybody tries to sell the value built into the car. Everybody's always trying to sell the deal. Um, so, it, you know, in your more expensive cars, it's easy to get like 8 or 10 percent off. You know, and they might be making 2 percent. And then they get the incentive money from the manufacturer for hitting their sales goal. So when everything's all said and done, they, they end up making some money, but it's not a lot of money. You know, like I said before, in a, in a Mercedes store, maybe three and a half to four cents out of every dollar falls to the bottom line as net profit. And you know, if you're doing a couple hundred million dollars in sales, that can add up to a lot of net profit but man, you had to sell a lot of cars to actually have a lot of net profit. It's just, it's really, owning an automobile dealership is, is kind of like owning a grocery store. It's all based on volume. If you find this stuff interesting, and God forbid, I don't know why you would, but just in case you did, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to Your Auto Advocate, because you know why? We're here for you.